he's a bubble entertainer. You know, like he blows bubbles. Mm-hmm. And he did, you, has... did you blow bubbles when you were a kid, Steph? Oh, yeah, I still blow bubbles. Oh, he's back in town. He wants your new number. <laughs> <laughs> we're Generation X laughing at the world today. We're getting older, but we're still gonna play. Labyrinth. We have some sad news to start this week with, uh, and uh, it concerns one of our previous guests and somebody that Steph was definitely a fan of. I believe you got it. You booked this guest for us, but uh, you have to go back to season eight, episode 41, which was last year. Uh, but rest in peace, Rob the Rabbit Pitts. Damn, bummer. It is a bummer. Uh, what happened? He uh, he was diagnosed. Yeah, with he seemed cancer. fine when we talked to him. Yeah. Yeah, he um they were filming season two back in the spring of this year and he was having a lot of acid reflux and he went to urgent care a couple of times because I guess it got so bad. And then the next thing you know, you know, it went for more testing because he started losing weight and stage four stomach cancer. Dang, dang, oh. dang. That's terrible. I have it all the time, so now it's what I'm gonna be thinking about. His oh. voice sounded like it suffers from acid reflux when we were talking to him. Yeah. yeah. And and, yeah. And, and that's all I think thought about when this came up. I was like, oh, man, that would have been. Yeah, it would have been right in the middle of it. Yeah. And he's just like, I mean, it's not like he, Marlboro Reds, I'm sure, didn't have a little something to do with that voice. Oh, yeah, and bit, drinking, you know, and, yeah. it just sucks, man. I mean, he was he just turned 45 three weeks ago. And uh, if you've never heard our interview with him, you can check it out again. It's season eight, episode 41. And uh, you can find that on YouTube or in our feed, our audio <laughs> feed. Watch that Tex Mex Motors on on Netflix. It was good. Yes. Watch Are they going to run season two? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure they will because they he was given They'll the just option dedicate, dedicate the whole season to him. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I know that uh, Jamie, I follow her on Instagram. And she's just like bro, really tore up about it, and uh, they gave him the option to take a break. They they should go home, and they, he knew he didn't mm. have much time left, but he wanted to finish the series, so. Mm-hmm. It was really important to him. So I would say they're definitely going to. His funeral is, I think, Friday or Saturday, and it's open to the public. And Netflix is going to be there. Yeah. And, like, uh, they're having a big car meet, which I thought was really nice in his honor. Right. So sending him out of style. Netflix is pretty good with their the people that they that they hire. And, you know, they did that really cool special with Norm where, you know, they gave him they gave Netflix the footage of him recording his stand up. Uh, his final stand-up routine that he never got to do in front of audiences and just doing it uh, at his computer and then making a show out of that and then having all the the comedian friends of his weigh in on that. So rest in peace definitely to Rob the Rabbit Pitts. Circus, we go to the circus, we're having a good time. The clown car comes out, they got 15 fucking clowns in one little tiny car. My kids were like, Holy shit, how are they doing? I said, I don't know, they're fucking pros. We were driving home, the kids are still talking about it. They were fucking incredible. All of a sudden, the little car rolls up next to us on the highway. All 15 of the fucking clowns are in there. My kids are like, Yeah! Then they hit an oil slick and they fucking spin. It goes right. It hits a fucking truck, fucking blows up. We were like, did we just see that shit? We went to the funeral. One coffin, all 15 of them. And I was like, they still got it, man. These fucking guys. Did anybody on the panel watch Adam Sandler Love You on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. Most of it. Most of it? You didn't like it or you just didn't finish it? No, I liked it. Now, what are the names of these guys? The Safdie brothers? Is that their name? Yeah. The, they directed it, or one of them did. Josh. And, yeah. yeah, Josh Safdie. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know that it would be just filled with these amazing, funny stories that had me rolling and crying and, uh, you know, crying from laughter. Uh, but in, in her, in her mixed with all of that was some of these songs that he created. And I don't know. Dustin brought up a good point in our text thread. We were talking about the special how much of that was real and how much was a put on or scripted, like his audio visual stuff not working, the piano falling through the hole in the stage, the dog running out on stage, which I thought was cool. Do you think that was all done on purpose or do you think that was actually 
uh, real. To me, what it looked like was um, you got a chance to see the first night of a tour that didn't mm-hmm. go off right, like all the problems okay. that pop up for a first night, and and he just rolled with it because that okay. first part felt really scripted, like the he whole did. drive. Oh, up. the part where he's walking in sort of did with the the lady yeah. with her son, yeah. uh, which he thought was going to be a little kid, and then it's like this forty year old guy. <laughs> But if you're a Gen Xer and you grew up or came of age, because you were growing up pretty much by the time he got famous, but you watched him on SNL, you watched him on Remote Control, which was on MTV, and all the early Adam Sandler movies all the way through now, this was really for us. This was, it was an, a great special. Um, it had a lot of his, you know, gross guy comedy. Uh, but the songs were like the fat guy on a horse. That wasn't the song. I the fat guy on a horse. Yeah, yeah, fat cop on a horse, the old man dad. I'm looking at him. And then the line in the old man dad song where he goes, you have a middle-aged son, you don't speak to. <laughs> and the genie story. I'm, I don't like to spoil jokes, so I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it. But that genie story was fucking brilliant. Yeah. And and a lot of it was like that, I thought. Um, I enjoyed Schneider coming out and doing the Elvis bit. Did you see that yet, Steph? No, I haven't gotten there. That was All the right. best thing Rob could have done. To not yeah. piss anybody off was to put him in a costume, have him do a song, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he only pisses off people who are overly into politics, but he also will talk about politics on stage. So, yeah. Well, that's a thing. He's like, here, you know, sing this and go. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And go but it was sit fun. In the audience. Oh, at the beginning when he when he walks in to the venue, he has an opening act, and for some <laughs> reason, <laughs> Billy Tyler, Tyler and Lester. <laughs> yeah. I haven't uh, even thought of them. No, but I, I loved Will. Did you love them when you were young? Yeah, when I was a kid. I had just yeah. I'd forgotten like that he they even existed until I saw them. It was, like, it was oh kind God. of a, a joke that like who books this venue is yeah. <laughs> Willie yeah. Tyler and Lester are playing here. <laughs> but he must have reverence <laughs> for him because uh Yeah, I mean, Willie Tyler still plays at like the comedy store and stuff all the time. Oh, he does? Okay. Yeah. Uh, he was always funny. He was always on um, variety shows or he'd be on a panel show and uh, he always had Lester with him. And I loved that guy. And he looks pretty good for his age. Yeah. Um, but it was funny that, I mean, it was purposefully done. Yeah. Like He would never open for Adam Sandler. <laughs> he always, he had one of the few puppets that did not cause me to have nightmares when I was a little kid. What ones made you have nightmares? <clears throat> All Howdy Doody was freaky looking. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much any of them, except for, um, it was Lester the name of the puppet? Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. Lester, Lester the Lester puppet. Lester just, I don't know, Lester had cool vibes coming off of him. He wasn't that creepy. Um, you're going to wake up with the steak knife. Yeah. 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 Like Madam. Was, Madam. Yeah. Madam. Yeah. Whale yeah. of flowers and Madam. Yeah, she, she was, freaked me out. she freaked me out because of the way she looked, but the way that guy did her voice, uh, Whale and Flowers, it was funny. I'd like to tell you. Since I've seen you last, I've been on a lot of things. Been on Andy Williams, been on Don Ho, and I've been on Quaaludes. <laughs> Did he also have, oh no, there was another one. It wasn't Waylon Flowers. The, the there was a guy, guy who had the, the bird. You remember yeah, the, the emu guy. Yeah, the emu guy. And he had that big bird. It looked like one of the rows from Hee Haw. That Twilight Zone, though, that's what did it for me. Oh, yeah. I saw that when I was a little kid, and it just messed me up forever was for puppets. Charlie McCarthy? I think so. With uh, what was his name? Bergen. Uh, it's Candace Bergen. Ed- Edgar Bergen. Edgar Bergen. And uh, he had Charlie McCarthy. Do you think Edgar, I mean, do you think uh, Charlie McCarthy ever caught like Candace Bergen taking a shower? <laughs> I think he got a Woody. <laughs> she always she always said that that uh, Charlie McCarthy was his real offspring and, and she was just like on the side. Oh, yeah. Like he cared more yeah. about the dummy. He cared than more her. about the dummy than her. Yeah. Isn't it funny that they're dummies? They're called dummies. I wonder what the etymology of that is. Is it because they can't speak without someone else moving their mouths or putting a voice into their mouth? There aren't a lot of hip um, ventriloquists these days. Uh, who's the number one ventriloquist in the in the country? He's the guy from America's Got Talent. No, the guy. Well, yeah, but the guy that always plays around here. What's his name? Jeff he's Dunham. Called? Jeff Dunham. Yeah, Jeff Dunham. Yeah. yeah. He's hey. also one of the biggest, I think he's the most money-making comedian. Oh, Yeah. He yeah. makes a ton of money. I've never seen him do uh, live stand-up, or I've never seen his show, but I've watched a couple of them. Hopefully. That kind of explains America, doesn't it? What? That he'd be popular? People yeah. love that, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> then again, people go see Taylor Swift. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, 
at the end of Love You, uh, Adam Sandler's latest special on Netflix, he does a song that is an homage to comedy. And it's the comedy that, again, all of us grew up with. If you grew up Gen X, then you also grew up with the comedy that our grandparents and parents grew up with. So you had Laugh In, you had your show of shows, those types of things. But also about Benny Hill and and everybody that you could possibly imagine. Uh, Jack, see Jack. This video. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it because Steph hasn't seen it yet. But it's so good that I actually got teared up. And that doesn't usually happen when I'm watching a, um, a comedy special. And this it happened to me. Uh, nice tribute to some people that are no longer with us. And uh, my, one of my favorite lines that I will spoil is he said, thank you, uh, Ruth Buzzy's purse. Yeah. And then they showed the scene from Laughing where she would always hit Artie yeah. Jones, you know, those that old couple. And then I fucking tweeted it. And I get Twitter is now, if you're not talking about the election or your preferred presidential candidate, you don't get any traction. You know, I have what? I'm not bragging, but I have enough followers where you think I'd get a little interaction. I get it had a hundred and some impressions. And I tagged uh, Ruth Buzzy and Adam Sandler. And now I don't expect them to retweet it, but you'd think people would say something. No. Yeah, Ruth Buzzy's not doing well health wise. She no, but some she, strokes and stuff. She still tells good jokes on there, good yeah. stupid puns. And she I love to come out of her light things. stroke to tweet Tim back. <laughs> Jesus. Right. But again, I'm not talking about them. I'm just saying that nobody like, oh, well, I don't care. You're not talking about the election. You're not talking about the election. And in case you haven't noticed or heard about it yet, I have endorsed Donald Trump. I have suspended my campaign. By the way, this is RFK Jr. And I have suspended it. And, and yes, I did drive around with a whale head on my car and the blood ran all over my children. Uh, and it's and it smelled really bad. And, and I went, took it home into my lab and I, I went Dr. Mengele on it and cut it up and looked at its brain. Did you guys hear this story about the whale? It just never ends with this guy. <laughs> no, now yeah, what did he do? His daughter told the story about how they were at a beach someplace. It must have been in Maine or Massachusetts. And there was a whale carcass on the beach. And he's like, let's take this home. So he used the chainsaw, <laughs> to, <laughs> so he used the chainsaw to cut the head of the whale off. And he put it on the roof of their car. And every time they came to a stoplight or a stop sign, it would jostle enough to where the juices from its head would just drop all over the front of the car and into the car. They had to wear plastic bags on their heads to not get blood all over them. What was he to? Why? Why did well, he... I like to disembowel animals or... Uh, or he didn't I, want like, it to go to waste. He was going to eat it. Yeah, I was going to eat the brain. And... <laughs> I was well, this week in, at my regular job, the, the Von Hessler Doctrine, our, our host is on vacation. So I said the lead chair, but I was doing the, we were doing this RFK story and I said uh, something about how he killed a Bigfoot because uh, he wanted to, he left the carcass there so he could saw the legs off and make boots out of them. Uh, then he made love to the Loch Ness Monster and there's a bunch of monsters running around Scotland, babies that sound like a Kennedy. Not this kind of Kennedy. Ah, uh, this kind of Kennedy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just it the moon. Ein Loch Nesser. Yes. Two years ago, my buddy and I, uh, who is a chupacabra, we went on a goat killing spree in Texas. And we ended the night covered in blood under the full moon. And goat's blood is good for the skin. Mm. The more you find out about him, seems to have some issues with animals. Yeah, the more you find out about him, the more he seems like a serial killer in the yeah. making. Yeah. Or a wannabe. He's got too much money to be a serial killer. So he just says he's like Dexter. Maybe his dad before he died. RFK, uh, senior, said, son, uh, I have to teach you a code. You're going to be like Dexter, and you're going to have to learn how to kill animals and smother them the way your father taught me how to do it. Why do I sound more like Lord Baelish than I sound like <laughs> RFK? <laughs> son, sir. Maybe he needs a couple of uh, vaccinations or something. Nah, he's had all of his vaccinations, except for the COVID one. You know who he is? I'm, I'm so into uh, Game of Thrones again. But he does remind me of Ramsey Bolton. Mm. So RFK is the Ramsey Bolton of our era. Don't say that. I was going to vote for him. Oh okay. yeah, aren't you glad you found out about the whale? Nobody well, was going to. Nobody was going to vote for him. Some people were. Nah. So, some people thought, well, maybe this guy has a chance to win to go up against the the machine of two political parties. I mean, I thought that for a minute, but I was Surprise. never going to vote for him. Yeah. Then I found out that he killed a Bigfoot just to make boots out of its legs. <laughs> 
new trailers and trends with Steph. Another Gen X hero, Scarface. Are you guys Scarface fans? Uh, he was in the Ghetto Boys, right? He was. Yeah. yeah, I know the Ghetto Boys. Bushwick Bill was the little person that was in yeah. uh, the band, and he passed away, did he not? He did. Yeah. He did. He had the one eye from where he um, tried to kill himself one night when he was high on PCP, and he shot himself, but he lived. They came out a couple of years after NWA, and they were a little different. They were fun, but really kind of hardcore, weren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's the you know their soundtrack is all up in office space yeah that's right back up in your ass with the resurrection that's right what do you mean he's driving and he's rolling the window up because he sees a black person (laughs) yeah so again and he had his uh, solo album came out in the early 90s the diary of i love that album i mean Mm -hmm. you you know you've heard uh i've seen a man cry to see the man die that song Mm -hmm. anyway uh scarface is hospitalized in uh, the icu in houston and everybody's kind of like sending their prayers he's only 54 only and uh his kidneys got damaged so badly after covid that uh, he had to have a kidney transplant what damaged them i'm having the covid really that's yeah Yeah, he had it that bad. It damaged both kidneys. So he got a kidney transplant from his son, and his health has been better since, but he had just hasn't been the same. So they still haven't said why he's in ICU, but, um, you know, I'm just hoping that he's going to be all right. He just has not been the same since this whole debacle started in 2020 when he mm-hmm. first got the COVID. So he must have got the straight up COVID. Um, so we wish him the best. So hopefully Scarface, yeah. Scarf, Scarface will make a full recovery. Um, are he, anybody been following this whole Megalopolis deal from Francis Ford Coppola, his next I movie? Have. I yeah. saw they had to pull that trailer and fire everybody. Yeah, because yeah, AI made the AI made fake reviews that were bad. <laughs> yeah. Roger Ebert says it's the best movie he's seen in decades. <laughs> I've been hearing about this for quite a while. A couple of people I've interviewed in the past were either, um, you know, uh, bit players or stunt people in this movie. Um, and it's been in the works forever, right? Like, yeah, and he can, he, listen, if it doesn't make any money, uh, Francis Ford Coppola is going to have to do TV series because he put he sank all of his money into this. I think he sold his vineyard or uh, and a bunch of he just got rid of a lot of stuff and used that money to finance this film because no studio would give him money for it. And has it been picked up for distribution yet? I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know about that either. It, it um, has. Yeah. Okay. It did well at, at Cannes, right? It did. It, like it, it got a standing ovation. and I think it got a lot of, well, it got a standing ovation and it got a lot of heads being scratched because yeah. they didn't understand it. There's, there's parts of this movie, I still don't know how they're going to pull it off, where while the movie's going on, it's kind of like Rocky Horror Picture Show. There's a person that has to come out and literally talk to the screen live. They did it at, at Cannes, and it freaked everybody out because there's a live interaction portion of the movie that's part of the performance. And they said it's a first, you know, and it's part of his uh-huh. vision. So, yeah, it's going to have to be done at every live performance. You know, that happened to me once when I was at the Buckhead Twin Theater. I was sitting there enjoying <laughs> a movie, and a guy came up you know, offered me a handy. I'm like, hey, I'm just here for the film. Um, and you say that uh, this movie uh, has a bunch of uh, canceled actors in it. And then I asked who, and you put uh, Shia LaBeouf, Dustin Hoffman, and John Voight. I didn't know that uh, John Voight and Shia LaBeouf were canceled. Shia LaBeouf was canceled plenty of times. Yeah. He was for what? What did he do? That stupid thing where he will not divide us that got trolled? No, for... no, they have gay twigs. Whenever he was uh, dating her, he yeah. like, she... She said that he was uh, just intensely uh, psychologically abusive or some kind of crap. I don't know. Adam Driver, he's also, you know, he had issues as well. So he tried to use people who were kind of on Hollywood's bad list. Why is Dustin Hoffman on the bad list? What did he ever do? He's had some accusations. Bang the babysitter. He like came onto the babysitter. His daughter's friend, I think, said she he came on to her when she was like 16 or some crap. And, and what did John Voight do besides, you know, raise an ungrateful daughter? Or no, not? just because he's conservative. Yeah, he's, oh. yeah. 
Well, he was on, uh, what was that show that we all watched? That in the name I can't remember. Ray Donovan. He was on Ray Donovan for a long time. He played a bad guy, I think. So oh, that's that true. People didn't really care or whatever. But uh, the fr- I, at the end of the this article, they talk about how Fritz for Coppola got in trouble with like a lot of the female extras were complaining that he was kissing them. He was probably drunk and, and like just happy and being joyful. But he, you have to realize, dude, it's not 1974. Well, yeah, he's 85. And I think he's still like living in the in the well, heydays. The, that's also been that's that's been um, what, what's the word? It's been fixed. They mm-hmm. came back out and said that that was not what happened. The, uh, they actually oh, got to get a group of them got together and said it because what he was doing was showing them how to act in like a Studio 54 kind of setting okay and so he was literally going by and giving each one of them direct you know direction and okay. people who were observing this from the crew side is where those stories came from not from the uh, actual ladies that were on set themselves I they came forward and said that that wasn't true all right yeah this is those recordings of it so i guess whoever reported that was also the one that was recording it either way i don't really care uh to go see this movie uh, does, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be that great i'm gonna uh, see it just because it sounds like a train wreck so it should be worth it another thing i don't really care about but people are losing their crap is that oasis the band oasis finally after 15 years of the feuding brothers they have gotten back together and they're gonna go on tour and people In are well some yeah there's like a few shows i don't know but the, this is what kills me is that it became a trend on, I think it's X, yes, is where it trended at, that everybody started tweeting about how they're getting an Oasis reunion before GTA 6. And this became like some viral thing. What, does have to do, was, what do those two I, things have to do with each other? I, well, it, they have to do with each other because both of those things are on the same time frame. Oasis hasn't been together since GTA 5, which was huge. Yeah. came out and was successful. So it's funny that we're getting Oasis back together and GTA 6 in the same year because it's two things that no one ever thought would happen wow. separately, much less together. Well, I'm with right, Steph. Thank you for I, I never really... Uh, they have some hits. They have some hits that are okay, but uh, I don't really care if they get back together. One of the funniest memes I saw were Gen X are lining up to buy tickets and they're all old, but they have that uh, the horrible haircuts that they had in the 90s. You know, weird British rock guy hair with the long sideburns and the weird cut. You know, the tickets are outrageous from what they understand. The tickets are going to be super expensive. But the funniest thing I saw was like, um, now you now there's already a list on there of how to get your money back by next year when this when this doesn't happen. And okay. they get into fight yeah, and they fall back. Apart. Well, one of them yeah. it has, a, uh, what is it, a, a 200 or 20 million dollar divorce? So the tour is going to happen. You yeah. need to pay for the divorce. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's always money that's going to make you reconcile with someone you despise. Yeah. There isn't enough money in the world to get David Gilmore and Roger Waters to drag their old carcasses on a stage <laughs> around the country for a couple of years. But <laughs> Well, have you guys watched this new docuseries on Prime yet about uh, surviving Lake Lanier? Not yet, but I want to. Yeah, Lake I want to watch Lanier. that. Me too. If you don't live in Georgia, which most of you do, uh, there is a, a, a man-made reservoir lake. It's it's uh, called Lake Lanier, and uh, it's in North Georgia, and it's where we get all of our water from. But there's all sorts of horrible tales. Uh, a friend of mine used to work at the military school up there where they would do scuba diving in that lake. And I imagine there were some horrible stories to be told about that as well. But what's the, the horror movie? Th- do you know what that's called? And they just decided to make this documentary? I can't remember what the horror movies call it, um, which I, it was already out. Oh, it was. Yeah, and it was panned, I believe, quite a bit. They, I saw they were on the um, near. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Two two point six out of ten on IMDb. Yeah, yeah. But there's an episode of uh, those. Uh, creepy tales or on netflix or whatever it's the lake lanier episode that is mm-hmm. so good and this to me just sounds like an expanded version of that episode that they did yeah all about oscarville and everything yeah and now what is oscarville is that the town that was covered up yeah, by, the town yeah. They flooded. it was a, yeah it was a town that was 
predominantly a black town that was made up of uh, slave families that had, you know, migrated there and been there for a while. And then, you know, they came in and bought much like where I grew up in Norris. The TVA came in and bought up these small towns and property and then dammed up and created, you know, lakes to power the south. This was kind of done the same way to create a reservoir for uh, Atlanta and Georgia for water. And they kind but of it wasn't done people, ethically. Right? Oh, of course it wasn't done ethically. When was it done? In the 50s? Uh, one of the tellings of it was how they did fine there. I mean, there were white people around there, and they, they made their way. And a lot of these people had their own farms and stuff. But uh, somebody got uh, woke up and said that some black guy was standing over some chick. And the next thing you know, they're lynching everybody. And um, they chased them all the way to the to the uh, Chattanooga. Probably Developers, it's like an episode, a horrible episode of Scooby Doo, where they just frame everybody. And yeah, and they ran everybody out of town. Like right. they had to swim across the river or die. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. I, well, maybe they'll uh, get some. This will draw enough attention to it to where people will get, you know, money or something. Well, that's what people say, though. That's why that. That's why so many people die in Lake Lanier. And if you look it up, it is one of the deadliest lakes in the country. Oh, yeah, we yeah. dealt with. Trees and stems. Go ahead, Dustin. No, that, well, that's the crux of this whole story is the fact that, you know, every year you have dozen, literally dozens of people die on this lake. And every time you hear it on the news, if you're from Georgia, it's like, oh, Lake Lanier got another one. Mm -hmm. It's just all the time. Does the same thing happen at Alatoona? Not to the degree no. that it happens there, no. Or Chattoog? <laughs> because there's no Margaritaville on Alato Lake Alatoona. That's true. I, don't, I don't ever hear about some crazy crap going down on Lake Oconee. No, it's all Lake Lanier, the haunted mm -hmm. lake. I'm going to watch it, just see if there's anything different from that other show. So this is so crazy. This guy in California, he's a bubble entertainer, you know, like he blows bubbles. Mm -hmm. And he did, gets... you, did you blow bubbles when you were a kid, Steph? Oh, yeah, I still blow bubbles. Oh, he's back in town. He wants your new number. <laughs> <laughs> that never gets old. Amazing, Jonathan. Yes. Damn it. Well, he got cited for fluid littering. Well, definitely don't be blowing bubbles at the uh, at the beach in San Diego. What did he do? Spill some or did he get in trouble for blowing the bubbles? He got in trouble for blowing the bubbles. I mean, he's a they said that his bubble mix can get on the grass and kill the grass and oh jesus all this Christ. Other what is wrong with but he, california but he, makes it, but he makes his own bubble solution so it's non-toxic he keeps telling him that like it's not going to kill the grass he's he's been blowing bubbles in that same spot for eight years and he hasn't killed any grass bubbles, like, bu like bubbles didn't come yet <laughs> yeah bubbles hasn't come yet and I, and the 2.6 million homeless people that take a shit on the ground aren't there <laughs> Well, that's okay. Hey, I'm the governor of California, and if you're spilling bubbles anywhere, you're in a lot of trouble. What a is fucking it, state. Well, the homeless people can't pay the fine, Dustin. This guy is a business owner. <laughs> pay yeah. The fine. yeah, they're like, California's looking for all that bubble money. You can't have a Walgreens on any corner in any city in California or it gets robbed every day. But just don't blow bubbles. Don't blow bubbles. Yeah, he said that a lot of the people in the bubble blowing community are being affected by this. <laughs> or what? A lot of people in the a bubble blowing community, like there, you know, there's a the bubble business is what he called there's it. There's a whole community of people that like to blow bubbles. He's there's the a bubble business guy in the state. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't know here that the crow was going to bomb? I'm glad it bombed. Suck. I'm so glad it bombed. And the guy's pissed off, right? He's mad that it, that the fans hate it. Yeah, he said something. Uh, they just need to go outside. Touch and, um, grass. Yeah. Go outside and touch the grass. How about don't remake a movie that everybody <laughs> loves? Also a movie that's tainted with the death of the star. Yeah, and that's already been remade. Yeah. Multiple you know, times. <laughs> Badly. I don't, know how, I don't know how going out and touching the grass is going to make this movie better. It's not. And uh, sorry, dude. Don't make remakes. And if you're going to do it, don't do a shitty job. Yeah. Um, well, how about this new TikTok trend that's a, well, it's not a TikTok trend. It's just a, it's just a trend's taken over Gen Z and it's okay. a free bleeding. Yeah. And yeah. Not like free falling, but it is like a Tom Petty, like, you know, free bleeding. There's a wet spot <laughs> drying in my panties. There's a tampon under the sink and I got blood. 
dripping in my undies. <laughs> and you know that it really does stink. Because <laughs> I'm free. Free bleeding. <laughs> Are people really doing this? This is some crap. That these wear red nasty, pants, right? <laughs> well, yeah, these nasty hippies. They started this crap in the 70s. But um, only recently, you know, Gen Z, they uh, decided we're going to give this a shot. It's it's really uh, just I'm just going to like bleed. Just, you know, I'm just going to live my life. And, yeah. you know, they're TikToking about it and tweeting about it and so forth. And it's really the most disgusting thing. Like even I think cave women, you know, found like an old wombat or something stuffed down there. I mean, just the fact that you're just walking around bleeding is the grossest thing that I've ever heard. <laughs> read somewhere that their periods attract bears. Bears can smell the menstruation. That's just great. I would say, are they using a diva cup to collect it or just nothing? Nothing. Not just okay. free bleeding, like free balling, yeah, free balling. Balling. just nice. letting it roll. Yeah. They just wear like red pants or yeah. And, you know, they just go to bed and they have like special period sheets and they mm. have uh, hey, to each you know, some own. of them have period pants. No, no, not to each their own. This is this should be illegal. This is disgusting. <laughs> oh, and Nikki Glazer is going to be hosting the Golden Globes. And I think they're probably going to wish that Ricky Gervais would come back and lampoon them yeah, when she, she gets done with her ass. She, she can roast it just as good as Gervais, I think, if she if, if they let her. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. If she if she goes balls out, they'll wish yeah. Gervais was there roasting their ass. <laughs> And I feel bad for Joe, Joe uh, what's his name, Joe, Joe Coy. He hosted it last year, right? Yeah. Yeah, he got roasted for, for just doing his job. Um, maybe they'll let they'll let Nikki Glazer get away with it. But she's not going to pull her punches, so. No, no, no matter what she says. And she knows, you know, she's really in the know about all the celebrity gossip oh, and yeah. that kind of crap. So she's right. really going to go for the jugular. I think it's going to be great. I'm going to watch it just for her opening crap. Yeah. Uh, so I think that'll be great. And um, why <laughs> the original La Bamba filmmaker, he didn't want them to remake it. But since they did it anyway, he was like, well, I guess I'll produce. So they're yeah. remaking La Bamba. And uh, I don't know why. I feel like that's a movie that it doesn't need to be remade. I love the movie La Bamba. Jeff and I saw it, I think, opening weekend when it came out and we got there early enough. A radio station was there doing a goofy radio promotion and we got knock off Ray Bans that said La Bamba. Yeah. Oh wow. And but I loved that movie. And uh I guess a couple of biographies have come out since that movie was made about Richie Valens, so they want to update it. I don't know why they're doing it. Um nobody's gonna care. No no how none of these kids know who that just is. Just watch the original. Yeah, yeah, just watch the original. And it has a great cast. Uh Lou Diamond Phillips, what's his name? Asay Morales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's and, uh, fantastic in this movie. Jennifer Runyon? Was it Jennifer Runyon? I don't know. The guy who played uh, Donna's dad. What is he? Italian? He was good. <laughs> and uh, what's the one that played uh, Richie's first girlfriend that his brother stole from him? He said uh, she was uh, somebody back in the 80s. She was in a few movies. He stole her girlfriend? I don't remember that. Yeah. That was Richie's girlfriend when they were in uh, Mexico. Oh, yeah. She was the one from... Um... Jacob's Ladder. Yes. She Jacob's was wife in that. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the cast they have from this movie. Um, S.A. Morales, Lou Diamond Phillips, you know, Bob Morales and Richie Valens. Uh, Daniel Von Zernick was Donna. Rosanna DeSoto. He's better than Queen for a day. Uh, was Connie Valenzuela. Elizabeth my Pena. My Richie. Yeah. No, my Richie. Um, Elizabeth Pena, who is in a lot of movies and TV That's shows. That's who I'm talking That's about. Elizabeth Pena. Yeah. Yeah. That's who I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. Um, who else is in uh, Joey Pants, Pantoliano, Brian Set Seltzer. He played Eddie Cochran. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick Dees is in this movie. Uh, Howard Huntsbury played Jackie Wilson. Uh, let's see. Who played Bid the Big Bopper? I'm trying to find that. Who played the Big Bopper? Marshall Crenshaw played Buddy Holly. Uh, He's really good. Stephen Lee is this guy's name. And the guy who played Alan Freed, the DJ, uh, is so unknown, they have a picture of him as a Cardassian. Jeffrey Allen Chandler. So I guess he was in Star Trek. Uh, but that movie really helped bring about a lot of 50s 
50, a, a resurgence in 50s rock and roll, including that song, La Bamba, which was done by Los Lobos. It was a really good cover. And Marshall Crenshaw doing uh, the Buddy Holly song. Hey, you're a star, Rich. You stars don't fall from the sky. I'd never heard um, Lonely Teardrops until that movie and then discovered the genius of Jackie Wilson. No shit. Oh, yeah. Lonely Teardrops. <laughs> Jackie Wilson's great. Mm-hmm. All right. Is that your news? That's it. Thank you, Steph. You're welcome. And we are going to go do our uh, our Patreon only after show, so stick around for that uh, podcast news. Uh, I didn't listen to an awful lot, but uh, rest in peace, Dudesy. I think the the Dudesy podcast is done. They reached uh, what well, they they had some uh, bizarre points thing that they've been yeah, adding up to. They're ten thousand points. Yeah, the 10,000 points. But I think that experiment is done. They made a little news with the, uh, certainly with the Tom Brady stand up special and, of course, the George Carlin one um, that were done in AI. Uh, but they kind of, after that, they got in all the trouble and they stopped doing a lot of the celebrity AI stuff. So it just wasn't too interesting to me. Um, and then the the trip to Italy that, they, that uh, Will Sasso was on for a month. But anyway, it seems that it's done. And uh, they're offering now their Patreon for one dollar a month, so you can listen to all the doozy after doozy shows. And I, th- I think they'll come back with a new show, and I think that's what Will was kind of hinting at. But no doozy. No, I think that I think they'll reinvent themselves, leave the AI out of it, and then just mm-hmm. come back as a straight podcast. And maybe that'll be fun. As long as they keep doing uh, the voices and stuff like Adam's Applebee's, that was great. Um, I checked out the Harland Highway this week or last week. T.J. Miller was a guest. And T.J. Miller brings up that there's a guy that ate a car, mentions the car, and then he mentioned that he had a doctor supervising it. And they were talking about Vinnie Bucci. (laughs) We've had on the show. and Former podcast guest, Vinnie Bucci. Right. He did it for Adult Swim Online. He did uh, He Ate a Car. All right. Let's take a break. And we'll come back and do views or snooze and give you our staff picks. Radio Labyrinth is brought to you by Atlanta Pizza in Euro. Here's the thing about Atlanta Pizza in Euro. It's not in Atlanta, but they call it Atlanta Pizza in Euro. It's in Conyers. Why don't they call it CPG? I don't know. It tastes really good. I don't care. Meanwhile, over in Conyers, they have proudly been serving the East Metro Atlanta area for over 40 years. That's a lot of pizza and Euros. By the way, is it Euro or Gyro? Atlanta Pizza in Gyro is the place to be all summer long. They have over 16 ice-cold craft beers and ciders. What's wrong with just drinking cider out of a plastic jug in October like you're supposed to? No, you can drink it all the time, especially at Atlanta Pizza in Euro. Many others are also available in bottles and cans. Look, they have the best gyros, pizzas, hot subs, and Greek and Italian specialties around. Okay, stop by Monday through Friday from 11 to 9 p.m. And Saturday from 12 to 9 p.m. They're closed on Sundays. Why don't they close on Saturday? On Tuesday nights, they have team trivia from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Bring your smartest friends and test your trivia knowledge, okay, against the best Conyers has to offer, like Dustin. They also have a food truck. Contact Mike at 770-483-6228. For more details or to schedule an event. He also says, thank you for listening to the best podcast around and for all your business and continued support. Hey, do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, what are you waiting for? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They've been in Athens since 2005 with fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706 316 9366 or email them at athens at com. Is views or 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 and snooze views and we're back we are back Jeff let's do some views or snooze yeah, last week was the sandwich special, which we talked about. Only murders in the building, which I'm going to watch after, right after we record. And Gary, which I don't think has aired yet, the Gary, Gary Coleman documentary. Definitely Let me know when watch that's that, though. That, it's on Peacock. Ah, God damn it. All these streaming services. Why can't they just, you know what they ought to do? Bundle them all into one thing and call it cable and call it a day. 
Yeah, for real. <laughs> Rings of Power comes back this week on Amazon. Oh, I want to see. I can't wait for that. Yeah, I love season one. Yeah, it was great. It's abuse for me. Uh, this new show, English Teacher, comes on FX on the, September second. So it looks um, funny. Yeah, it looks pretty funny. Yeah, and it's created by the the guys that made Portlandia and Baskets and What We Do in the Shadows in Atlanta. I think it looks good. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, it's on FX and then streaming on Hulu the next day. Mm. And then uh, Borderlands comes to VOD <laughs> if you want to watch that shit at no, home. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Not even it's when it's free. In, in theater last it. theater last week. And now yeah. it's on video on demand. I'll just you know what I'd rather do? Go buy a PlayStation and get the games and play them again. All right, thank you, Jeff. Staff picks time. Uh, I reserved mine last week. Wise Guy, the Sopranos documentary. Uh, the uh, trailer is available, and that is uh, coming on uh, HBO. It's a documentary about the Sopranos. If you can't get enough Sopranos, then you can. You know, watch that and then start over again, which probably will happen to me, even though I'm uh, already in season five of Game of Thrones. And you can really tell where Game of Thrones starts to go this way, which is down. And that is season five. Uh, my sapphic, uh I listened to uh, this guy on um, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd check out his comedy special. It's called Ale Alex Edelman Just for Us. It was really good. It's more like a, one of those one man show kind of shows. Uh huh. Or not straight stand up. But it was very good. Good. That's something I might check out. Mustaf pick is I'm rewatching The Terror season one. Uh, came Terror. it came out on Netflix. They put it out, and uh, I forgot how good it was. Yeah, I started doing it, and then it was just it was so bleak. I just couldn't yeah. watch it. I'm yeah. like, God bless it. I forgot. This is very. Yeah, you got to be in that mind the head for God. It's, it is really good though. Yeah, it had Mance Raider in it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, everybody in it was stellar, and yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, uh, I don't blame you for that, Dustin. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I want to watch it, and then I was like, Oh God, this is depressing. <laughs> and didn't they do a season, uh, a, a second season, where it was, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, what's his name, uh, George Takei? Yes. Yeah, yeah, in uh, Japanese internment camps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my staff pick is the it's on Netflix this week. It's the uh, one of those untolds and it's the murder of Air McNair. It's the story of uh, Steve McNair oh, and his yeah, murder. That's right. Yeah. Is it yeah, good? So, yeah, it's very good. It's very yeah. good. And it's short, too. It's only 58 minutes long. But um, check it out. It's on Netflix. The the murder of Air McNair. I was I loved him. I was a huge. I did, too. I thought I he was like great. That but, I, you know, and especially since they beat the Bills to go to the Super Bowl that year. But I liked Steve McNair and I was rooting for him so hard to win that Super Bowl against the Rams. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, what was it like an uh, like a centimeter short across in that line? But he was so fun to watch and he was a good quarterback and I, he seemed like a decent guy. That sucks. Yeah, everybody that talks about him said that he he was he was a great guy. So anyway, that sucks. But yeah, check it out. All right, everybody. Thank you for your staff picks. Uh, let's do some plugs. Every Monday I do an audio only version of, uh, well, just me. It's called Trambles and I put it out in the audio feed. So wherever you get Radio Labyrinth, uh, audio wise, you can, you can get it there. Um, I also do a radio show on WSB that's a pop culture centered show that airs every Saturday at seven. Now for the next couple of months during football season, college football season, it will be airing, um, when it airs and i'll let you know that sometimes it'll be tense sometimes it'll be when it when it airs but uh right now in the podcast feed you can get my dragon con preview the final interview with dan carroll uh, the the media relations person who's uh passing the torch to a new person but we talk about uh you know some of his favorite stories and and we just can turn on the microphones and start talking uh this week on the radio show comedian john early i spoke to him uh he has a new comedy album coming out he talks about that and uh, he's going to be in the city of atlanta on october 20th what a nice nice guy very very funny he on his comedy albums which is really his it's his hbo special that he just did but it's he's putting it out with new material he has an alter ego in a that he that he performs as he's also got a cover band that he put together where they do covers of songs uh, like Britney Spears and uh, Neil Young for some reason. But we had a pretty fun conversation about comedy and he's a he's he's young, but he knows all the stuff that we know. And he's you know, and that comes from his upbringing. So check that out. And that'll be a podcast next week. Uh, if 
if you would like to become a Radio Labyrinth uh, Patreon member and have access to our Patreon only show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews and uh, sign up at whatever level you're comfortable with because you get access to the Patreon show. You can also become a producer at the $25 a month level, which gets you a producer credit and a shout out every week. And if you're new and you sign up, you get a T-shirt and uh, one of my drawings, if you like. Uh, producers are John Allen, Matt Carter, Chris Chandler, Mike D., Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Roby Neely, Jeff Peterson, Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith. So thank you guys very, very much. We love all of our Patreon people and we love our producers uh, as well. So um, don't forget if you want to go to YouTube, we didn't have any this week, uh, leave a comment under the video. And other than that, I got nothing else. You guys want to uh, mosey on over and do the after show? Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Until next keep time. Canine. Keep it canine. Keep it canine. Keep it canine. canine. canine teeth. Well, what do you say all good things come to an end? What's that got to do with this show? Lost in the